Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Clary Slim. Today I'm going to share with you P5 Science Topic 1, okay, Chapter 1 if you may call it. It is the reproduction of plants. So there's a lot of memorization involved in this topic especially because you need to know the different parts of the plants. So without further ado, let's go on to it. Uh, okay, if you can see over here, I have some notes over here. So how we teach science in ILAC is that we teach children the necessary information that need to memorize in order to answer the section C questions, which is the, the short answer question. Okay, so keywords is very important in order to understand that. So we teach children how to memorize certain sentences, certain keywords in order to make sure every single one of their answers has a keyword inside. So in this case, in this topic, you need to memorize that it is the inability of the plants to move freely that plants reproduce in a large variety of ways due to the natural environment so from this understanding from this sentence you will realize that okay there are many different types of plants so in terms of flowering plants there is the um, uh, bisexual plant bisexual flower and then there is also the unisexual flower which I will show later so let's just read through this just like the humans plants reproduce by fertilization from the help of both male and female so what does bisexual flower mean bisexual flower basically means that there is a uh, two gender to it so two gender to it it means okay just let me extend this it means that the flower itself has got two parts the male part which is called the stamen okay in the stamen there's two parts that is uh, uh in cons that is involved in this stamen there is the anther the the at the top and then the filament that holds it up all the way up okay so how do i remember that stamen is for male the male reproduction part because there is a man inside this word versus pistil so if I can remember stamen is a male reproduction part, the pistil, the other one, will be the female, okay? So this is how I teach children to remember. So then there is the stigma and the style. How do I remember what which one is on top, which one is the one holding it up? Okay, stigma is made out of G over here. So it is it has the, the top round shape at the top here, just like the top of this part of the flower. And then the style has got a Y, so it, it sticks down all the way, like a Y down here. Okay, so these are just uh, some uh, uh, easy ways, easy tips for the children to remember because there's just too many terms to remember in this topic okay and then there is the ovary the ovary is just like the female reproductive part okay it is where the baby is conceived right and then there is the petal so the those are not as uh, important so what does each of this actually serve in terms of function so let's come back to this uh, let, let's look at the uh, explanation for each part the anther remember the top end of this uh, male reproductive part it contains the pollen sacs which is the male reproductive cells, okay? The cells are called the pollens. The sacs are the ones that hold it, okay? Which split open to release the grains of pollen. The pollen is the male reproductive cells. The filament holds up the anther. That's all that you need to memorize in terms of the function of the filament. It holds up the anther. The stigma is the female reproductive organ, which is called the pistil. Some of the signs or books actually call them carpel. They are sticky, they help to track the pollen. So the style is the one that holds up the stigma, as I mentioned, because the Y actually sticks all the way down to the ovary, which contains ovules. The ovules are like the female reproductive egg cells, if you can call it. Okay, so it develops into fruit to protect the seed. So the female reproductive cell is called the ovule, you see here, develops into seeds once fertilized. Therefore, if there is only one one ovule it will develop into one seed fruit if there's many ovules the fruit will have many seeds so if you can imagine a papaya will have many many ovules a mango will have only one ovule so a fertilized ovule will develop into seeds and the ovary will be the fruit that develops the seed exactly what i said just now right okay so the pollinators help to complete the process of fertilization Example, the animal, the wind, and the water. So these are called pollinators, right? So I will explain more on that later. So for example, so this bee is a pollinator. Why do I say that? Because the bee helps to mess its body up. You can call that, okay, you can say that. It, it dirties itself using the pollens. 
and (uh) the pollens can be found all over the body and it flies from flower to flower so as it lands from flower to flower if it's a bisexual flower it basically just stay at the same flower and move around and (uh) the the fertilisation can happen if it's a uni sex flower then the the flying from one flower to another will help a lot if without the bees we can also have the wind to do the job okay if not water for water plants okay so unisexual flower will be flowers that either has only male or female reproductive cells so there's some examples over here that I can show you so for example this one so this one each flower has got a male and a female body part uh, the male reproductive parts okay so uh, in another plant it can be one flower is male one flower is female in other plants it can be one set of the plant is female entirely and the other set of the same plant is male entirely Okay, so these combinations are uh, available, are, are, can be found in the plants out there. Okay, different species have a different kind of reproduction, uh, reproduction types. Non-flowering plants. We include non-flowering plants as ferns and mosses. They share the same reproductive uh, reproduction method as the fungi, which are mushrooms and molds. They do it through spores over here okay so how are spores dispersed spores are dispersed by wind so like seeds spores will germinate and grow into young plants when the conditions are favorable okay so it's the same thing as long as the conditions are favorable they can germinate into young plants from spores so let's take a look at this uh, this table clearly shows you what is the differences between non-flowering plants and fungi? So non-flowering non plants includes the ferns and the moss. So the spores can be found under side of the mature leaves. You can see all this under side. Above you don't see them. Above they are just green. Under side you see these dots. So the spores are found for mosses. They are found at the end of the stalks. A bit like the mold. Okay, so the mold, the spores are also found at the end of the stalks. Where the spores for mushrooms are found in between these gills. Okay, they look like fish gills, but they're not fishes. So asexual reproduction are plants that reproduce through vegetative reproduction. For example, strawberries, they run through crawlers and runners, they call it. Okay, so basically they have uh, these branches of leaves that grows alongside them, the main plant, and then they grow into young plants from there. Potatoes, their roots, gingers, their roots, and banana, they grow from shoots. So these are the vegetative reproduction. Okay. Uh, characteristics of young plant is exactly the same as the adult plant so usually they look exactly the same as the adult plant because they develop from the adult plant directly it's not through seeds it's not through spores seed dispersal is also something very important in this topic you need to understand how different seeds are dispersed and um, uh, the characteristics of each of this so for example if they uh, you are required to identify a seed or rather a plant that is dispersed by wind, you will need to know that the structure that is necessary for wind dispersal, the seed must have wing-like structure. Wing-like structure, that means it is as if they are wings to fly. And they must be light in order to be blown away by the wind, right? If it's a splitting and explosion, some books call it splitting action, some books call it explosion, they basically must come in pots like this. Okay, the seed is inside these pots. Uh, papaya, so uh, the in order to be dispersed through fruits, through animals, they must either have hooks that is light enough to hang on, if not, they will be sweet, okay? So they will be sweet and fleshy and juicy so that the animals will actually eat them in order to disperse them. Otherwise, they will have to have this husk around them so that they are light enough, they can float, Okay? So only when they can float, they will be able to be dispersed through water. Okay, so from here, let me share some of the common questions that you will see in test papers. Then you will understand how to answer these kind of questions. Okay, common question number one. So let's see, fruit A, fruit B, how are fruit A dispersed? Fruit A is obviously soft hair. It looks very light. It looks very soft. It is by wind. Okay, so this one is by wind. Fruit B, it has hooks. Or the only reason why they have hooks is because so that they can hook onto animals as they walk by and the animals will help them move to somewhere else. 
when the animals scratch them off when they reach another place okay so the hooks will tell you it is clearly animals so besides having soft hair what is another characteristic that fruit A must have in order to be dispersed by the method described in A so you said that they must be they are dispersed by wind correct so what is another characteristic besides it being soft okay so if you were to look back at my notes you will be able to answer this question what is the characteristics uh, for wind dispersal so let's look back at the table over here for wind dispersal you will need to you need the seed to be very light okay so besides it being soft it has to be very light in fact being soft is not even a feature right they just give it to you and, and just suggest to you that okay if it's soft you're supposed to assume that it is light okay otherwise another thing that you can mention is that it should have wing like structure Describe the characteristics that allow fruit B to be dispersed in the method described. So fruit B is by animal. So how do you know that it is by animal? This is basically what the question is asking for. Uh, so what is what the answer is, is that you have to say that it must have hooks. Because by having hooks, it will allow the, uh, the hooks to hook onto the animal's fur. Then it will be able to disperse itself. Okay, so therefore that is the answer for you to see, take a look. So it has hooks that allows it to hook onto animal's fur or any human clothing upon gentle contact. Let's look at this question over here. Just let me remove the split screen. Okay, so this question. So just now I mentioned papaya and mango in this case is rambutan rambutan has got one seed inside so alice and sally studied the fruits above alice concluded that there are more of views in the rambutan flower than the papaya flower so straight away you know alice is wrong because just now i mentioned when there is only one of view there will be one seed many of views many seed so sally argued the other way around of course therefore sally is correct so how do you answer what is the keyword then so you need to tell me who is correct first Therefore, your answer will be Sally is correct over here, the answer in yellow. So Sally is correct because an ovule becomes a seed after fertilization and there are more seeds in a papaya than in a rambutan. So how do you know your answer is correct? Because first thing you mentioned that ovule becomes a seed. That is the most important thing you need to mention. Okay, Ovule becomes a seed, that is one point after fertilization okay so therefore because ovules become seeds there are more seeds in papaya therefore sally is correct that's exactly what sally said next question so uh in this question is quite a common question as well that's why i say this topic a lot of, a lot of memorization so definitely you need to know that this long part over here is the filament holding up the anther over here and this bulging part in the middle is the ovary so that's your answer over here this is filament and this will be the ovary okay so can we remove the stigma of the flower which means this part okay remember that you need to have all these uh, um, uh, items names uh, at the back of your mind in order to answer these questions so however he observed that the flower had developed into a fruit after two weeks how is that possible actually this this is some logic as well that the teacher wants you to be able to to come up with uh, this logic is that because it was already fertilized before the stigma was removed isn't it that's why the answer uh, that's why the fruit is able to uh, develop uh, into uh, a fertilized fruit right so the old views were already fertilized even before the stigma was removed so what is that question testing you about the question is actually testing you to uh, whether you understand that this part has nothing to do with this part so even if you remove this part over here the stigma the if the fertilization has already occurred you remove the stigma it has nothing to do it will not stop the fertilization from happening the fruit will still develop Okay, so that's what the question is testing you on. Next question. Betty found some fruits of uh, uh, different trees. After studying them, she discovered that the fruits of tree type A were dispersed by wind, which means if it's dispersed by wind, what are the two characteristics over here? So again, let me split screen to show you. Remember the uh, seed dispersal uh, figure that we have over here? Yeah. So if it's dispersed by wind, it has to have number one, wind-like structure, number two, light. 
so what do you write over there so you have to write the word exact word the wind light structure there and it has to be light so Betty also concluded that all fruits that were dispersed by water must be light suggests why Betty's statement is not correct so if you want to go against that statement, you have to say that it is not correct. You have to correct it, isn't it? So what is the correct answer for that? Uh, fruits that is supposed to be dispersed by water need not be light, but they must definitely be able to float. So that is the accurate answer. They must be able to float. If they are not able to float, they will not be able to be dispersed by wind, which is what you have memorized over here isn't it and uh, so for example if you were to give an example example of a fruit to support your answer it will be coconut coconut is heavy but it floats right okay let's just look at one last question over here Kathy discovered an interesting plant in her garden that bears two different types of white colored flowers one flower has male reproductive parts over here this is the male how do you know it is male because it doesn't have a bulging part in the middle this one has the one with the bulging part how do you remember females get pregnant the one with the bulging uh, middle is the female okay that's how you remember uh, and the other has female reproductive parts only she noticed that the reproductive parts of each flower stick out of the petals so the petals are at the side and then they are above the petals so very simply after a few weeks, she noticed that the petals as you dropped, um, the base of flower A started to enlarge. So which flower has a female reproductive part? Just now already mentioned the part with the enlarged, uh, the part with the enlargement, okay, which will be flower A. So how do I know? The only reason why it will enlarge is because it is fertilized. So that is how you explain. So let's write down the answer over here. Flower A, as it is starting to enlarge, to form a fruit with a fertilized ovule inside, which will become a seed. So what are your keywords? The only reason why you will identify flower A to be the answer because it enlarged, right? And it is fertilized. Ovule, these are the keywords for your answer. So how are these flowers pollinated? Okay, very simple. So this is the male and the, the male and the female part. So how do they touch each other? It's either through wind or through pollinators. Pollinators would be like animals. Okay, wind is also one of the pollinators. So your answer only need to have one, either one of them, either animals or pollinators, up to you. So in this case, I will just use the wind. So the reproduction parts will actually uh, expose to allow wind to capture and the pollen grains and the stigma to catch the pollen grains okay so what is this talking about the reproduction parts are exposed um, they are above the petals to allow the wind to capture so the pollen grains and the stigma will, will uh, the pollen grains will be caught by the stigma okay so there's some typo error here so the pollen grains will be caught by the stigma therefore sending it down into the ovary in order for it to be uh, fertilized okay so you need to continue the sentence over here pollen grains will be caught by the stigma which travels down the style to the ovary to be fertilized this will be the complete sentence because it's a two marks okay so where are the keywords the keywords will be number one here by wind okay so it is exposed uh, uh, by wind, it will say you. You can say that the wind capture the pollen grains. Uh, the reproduction parts are exposed to allow wind to capture the pollen grains. Okay, so the pollen grains are captured. The wind will allow it to capture the pollen grains. That's the keyword, which will be caught by the stigma, which travels down to the style to the ovary. So this entire part. This entire process you need to describe in order to get your second mark. Okay, so these are the keywords that you have learned for this topic. Be sure to memorize them by heart so that you know as long as it's asking for flower parts, these are the answers you need to put inside the question. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.